Yeah. That's this is actually the first, this is the first, first time we've done it in person. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Because oh, nice. he's, so he's in New Hampshire. I'm in Wisconsin. Oh, okay. And uh, like when we, Harrison was obviously in Washington. Who else do we have? Um, we had Paula when she was in Washington. Yeah. We had, you were in Italy for that one. I was one. in Italy for that one. <laughs> Sam Coffin was in Australia. Christine Gerard was in Canada. Like nobody has ever been oh, anywhere yeah. near us. We've yeah. never even Koha been the same time. Yeah. 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 The same hotel room. Yeah. That's cool. So yeah, cool. it's cool. So, Kevin, welcome. Thank you for being the first live uh, in-person edition of the Two Doctors podcast. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Um, why don't we start? Just uh, maybe tell us a little bit about your background in the sport, how you got involved, and what you've been up to. Cool. Yeah, so I've been coaching weightlifting for about six years now, so I'm still fairly new. Um, my background, I was a gymnast growing up, um, got into lifting weights in high school, did kind of a powerlifting type of template, found CrossFit in like 2009. Um, so I was competitive in CrossFit, went to the games in 2012 and 2015. Um, I was coaching gymnastics at the time, and Harrison Morris is actually my first weightlifting athlete. He's one of my gymnasts, and... Good guy to start with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No idea how lucky I was at the time. I'm, like, I'm, I'm pretty good at this coaching. Thing. Give uh, me anybody. I can yeah, turn them into... I can do it. <laughs> um, yeah, so Harrison was um, on my gymnastics team. He quit gymnastics, but uh, we wanted to keep working together. He didn't know what sport he wanted to do. I'm like, well, let's get you strong, and then you can kind of have your pick, whatever you want to do. Yeah. Um, so started him strength training got strong so fast saw that he had potential in the strength sports we started with powerlifting for about a year and a half and then um broke some records from what i understand in, yeah in the broke, powerlifting broke realm. Them. i think oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> all, all the records by a lot. Little, little freak he squatted what he did he squatted 100 kilos when he was 11 150 when he was 12 and he squatted 200 kilos what, 150 when he, when he was 12 yeah <laughs> Well, so there's a wait. 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 Doctor Westbrook did then, that yesterday, <laughs> and it was really hard. He squatted 200 kilos when he was 13. Oh my god! So like, there's a powerlifting meet, a local one. It was the week before his birthday, so um, we'd always do that meet. So like, when he squatted 200, it was like three days before he turned 14. Well, like, he's still 13, oh still counts. Gosh. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. at 14, it wouldn't be impressive. Yeah, no, <laughs> hardly impressive. Yeah, so so, he did three so, times body weight squat. He weighed 66. Oh my god. Squatted 200 when he was 13. So how do you transition somebody out of a sport that's so successful like that? Uh, I mean. So when he was 13, he was already doing weightlifting. Like weightlifting by then was his main sport. It was even, yeah, it even already while was. he was, it was just, competing. Yeah, in, I mean, in power we lifting. still squatting all the time, you know. Yeah, of course. So it's like we were just, uh, it was just a local meet. And it was uh, fun. We did what basically one powerlifting meet a year mm -hmm. after the first. The first year, we're pretty much focusing on powerlifting because at the time, honestly, I didn't feel like I was ready to teach him the lifts. And I saw, I knew he had so much potential. I didn't mm -hmm. want to screw it up. Mm -hmm. Um, but then we just kind of got started. He was pretty resistant in the beginning. He thought that powerlifting was going to be a sport. I'm like, dude, you can't go to the Olympics in powerlifting. Yeah. Um, so we started, started with weightlifting, and it was a learning process for both of us. I remember, like, teaching him the lifts. I had Greg Everett's book open, and we'd, like, follow the pictures <laughs> and did, did each step. Fantastic. Yeah. That's I mean, great. so it was, like, definitely a learning experience. Mm -hmm. But I think... Because I'd coached gymnastics for quite a while. Uh, I had a real good eye for movement, and I taught myself the lifts. Um, I'm, see, I'm a pretty good lifter for a CrossFit athlete. Mm -hmm. um, and that was kind of a long process for me, too. Like, I made a whole lot of mistakes in the beginning. I was just watching YouTube, filming every lift, and going back yeah. and trying to make the corrections. Mm -hmm. um, and I just got really fortunate to just stumble upon an athlete who's one in a million. You know, and um, from there, like, we've just had so many great opportunities to go to the Olympic Training Center and meet with pretty much all my idols in the sport, all these coaches who I, like, really respected and just tried to soak up everything I could from all of them. Um, so just having Harrison, like, really helped me a lot as a coach just because of all those opportunities we've had. Yeah. And now I feel, like, real confident as a coach mm -hmm. just be oh, because of those experiences. So. Yeah. It's been a it's been a journey. It's been a lot of fun. That's great. 
feel like I don't even know where to begin with questions. Yeah. Just because, like, there's so much, like, the gymnastics element, transitioning Harris from one sport to another to a third sport, your background. But I just want to start, like, what's your gymnastics base, I guess? Because clearly for you, and I'm assuming it was similar for Harrison, but, like, when you say you did gymnastics, did you, were you someone who started at, like, five or six? No, I... I started really late for a gymnast. I didn't start till I was like 12, which that, that doesn't oh, sound for most sports. It's like, Hey, you can start when yeah, you're 12, yeah. but all my teammates were five when they yeah, started. Wow. Yeah. So I was, I was lucky. I had a trampoline when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think I was doing, I was doing back flips and front flips when I was like six or seven. And before I started gymnastics, I could already do like doubles on the trampoline and stuff. So I had a pretty good leg up just from that. Uh-huh. And I did, I did martial arts when I was a kid, which I think translates pretty well. Mm-hmm. So I was, an, I was an okay gymnast. I wasn't, I had to skip levels every year. Mm-hmm. So I, like it goes up to level 10 and it starts at level four. So I went level four, level six, level eight, nine, ten. 10. So I made it up to level 10. Okay. My senior year in, in high school. Wow. But, um, I didn't really have any difficulty. My routines were just really basic, really watered down. They were still counts. Yeah, I'm, ten, I made it there. Ten, only ten. one level ten gym this year. Okay, let's just. <laughs> I was, just I was real clean, table. and the skills I could do, like they looked pretty nice. But I just, I didn't have the difficulty, so I wasn't going to make it into college. Okay. It's, it's so competitive now for men's gymnastics. There's only, I don't know, ten or twelve schools now. Like really? I, yeah, so it's like you got to be got to be pretty much top 10 in your year. And I wasn't even close to that. So, but it gave me a great base and got into lifting and I was pretty strong. Mm-hmm. And from there, and flexible and yeah, you know, all it was flexible, like all the gymnastics stuff from CrossFit was like super basic yeah. gymnastics. <laughs> so I could like I never had to build up to doing the prescribed workouts. I was doing the yeah. prescribed stuff from the beginning. So yeah. it's like, is there, is there strength training aspects like, like weight training? I mean, in your gymnastics training or is it mostly body weight stuff? It, it's, it's almost all body weight. Okay. I mean now, like I train a lot of, I train a lot of gymnasts as just to compliment the weight training just compliments their gymnastics. I see like a lot of carryover from that. So mm-hmm. it's like, I, I think it's something that probably could have benefited me okay. at the time. It's not thing. It's not something that most coaches do, mm-hmm. but, um, my wife coaches gymnastics currently. Mm-hmm. So I, I get to work with a lot of her kids, which is good. Then they kind of get exposed to the sport and then you steal them away. Then I steal them away. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, gymnastics is just, it's such a time drain. Yeah. You know? It's like, yeah. it's a great sport. I love the sport, but it's like, it's pretty much a minimum of 20 hours a week. And if you're, even if you're doing 20, you're probably getting left behind because there's kids doing 30. Oh my gosh. You know, which, I mean, and if you want to make it into, into collegiate athletics, it's pretty much what you have to do from a really young age. Gymnastics mm-hmm. is so competitive and it's, there's so much of a skill component to it that like for gymnastics, you have to train more than you possibly could train for weightlifting. Mm-hmm. So for a lot of those kids, it works out really well. They have like a huge work capacity and their paradigm is like, they're used to train 20 hours a week. So if I get a kid four days a week for two hours a day, they feel like they're hardly doing anything. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's great. Yeah, so it makes it, yeah, it makes it real easy. So little little aside, my gymnastics history. You have a gymnastics exist. history. No. Okay. Ninety six, ninety six, <laughs> the year I discover Olympic weightlifting, right? Because I'm watching ninety six games in Atlanta. Naim Dimas, right? Same year, the Magnificent Seven, mm-hmm. the Dream Team, Dominic Mochianu, Kerry Strug. I'm watching that, and I'm like. I, I want to do one of these. I either want to be a tiny female gymnast apparently, or, or a weightlifter. And then I, I realized like... Uh, By the beard was, that you're growing at age seven, you probably shouldn't go to the small... I realized that wasn't going to work. Yeah, I was like, because, you know, Dominic Mochiano, I think we were about the same age. Uh, and I was like, okay, clearly it's I've missed the boat for gymnastics. But, and I didn't realize I'd also missed the boat for weightlifting. But, you know, you know at that point, 96, you didn't, there was less information, I think. I didn't know what age people started um but yeah i loved it i went to the dream team tour when they went around the country and uh really yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. that's cool that's really she's cool. here this weekend isn't she what yeah, really i think yeah i think i think dominique is yeah i think she's competing or, or competed already yeah <laughs> In weightlifting yeah I think dominique so. i'm pretty sure yeah 
get out. What? What? Yeah, I know there's an Olympian here. I don't know my gymnastics history as well, but I, I think that was her, yeah. We're going to look that we'll up to, as soon as we'll this podcast. To, we'll have to check that out, but I'm, I think she doing. competed earlier this weekend, yeah. Holy smokes. Yeah, she was in the same session as my youngest. I have a 10-year-old here. The uh, the athlete who competed at Youth Nationals this year, the record holder, that, yeah. that young woman. Mm -hmm. I, another another topic I want to get to. I know. Well, should we just jump into that, right? She is Mine as well. It ties in the gymnastics piece of it, too. So, yeah, you you have, uh, I mean, Harrison's obviously incredibly impressive. I would say just as impressive is this young athlete uh, you have, and I'm blanking on her name right now, but 10 years old. At Youth Nationals, I saw her snatch 36, is that right, or 35? I think she did 35 and 45 at Youth yeah. Nationals, yeah. And attempted a little bit more in the clean and jerk, right? Just, she, I think attempted, she, went five for six. she attempted 46. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And didn't, didn't quite make that 46. 10 years old, was in a 31 kilo class. <laughs> yeah. Technically, my phone weighs more than that. <laughs> yeah, uh, she's. I really think she's gonna be something special. Yeah. yeah. So uh, maybe take us through like her her training, and maybe it's not even that relevant uh, because she has, like you said, twenty hours a week is what she's used to. But like, what do you? What's training for a ten year old in that case? So she comes in. Uh, we're usually doing some type of skill work. I always try to find something that's going to be challenging for her. Not even like barbell skill work, but just um, we're doing Turkish get-ups and like a lot of balance component things, but I'll make stuff even harder. Like instead of holding onto a kettlebell, she has to balance a plate or she's doing um, single leg RDLs holding the plate overhead or mm -hmm. just balance work. Um, we almost always do something to warm up the shoulders, mm -hmm. something to um, engage the abs and then glute activation. So she'll do like a 10 or 15 minutes of something like that. And then we usually do jumps. Uh, we vary the jumps from just like standing jumps or more of a plyometric mm -hmm. um, single leg work there. Mm -hmm. And then from there we move into the barbell. So usually something to warm up the overhead position. So it might be maybe it's a snatch thoughts press or a clean thoughts press, close grip overhead squat, snatch balance, just something for that. And then from there, we get into the lifts. The lifts are usually about 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. Okay. Um, so usually either a snatch or a clean and jerk movement, mm -hmm. a pull, squats, pretty standard. And then back into some more gymnastics, upper body strength training. So maybe she's doing, um, she's doing like deficit handstand push-ups or dips, um, do lots you, of pull-ups, rope climbs, just a lot of that type of stuff. It's do a you, lot of GPP. A lot yeah, of just, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's like she her sessions are usually about an hour and a half. Okay. I have her five days a week, um, and that's most of the year. Like during the school year, that's usually a one-on-one -on -one session, mm -hmm. just because. Uh, she's homeschooled, and then she works with me, and then goes. She has gymnastics at three o'clock, so okay. then she's gym again from oh. three to eight. So she's like the last year she trained with me from like one thirty to three, okay. eat some food, and then go to gym. Hmm. Um, yeah, and then just lots of uh, lots of core work. We're always focusing on making sure she's able to keep a neutral spine, and and some stuff that's going to help her gymnastics too. Yeah. So. Yeah. Now, do you hesitate with the, the actual strength weight training, um, not to push that too hard because of her age, or do you kind of, um, like, what, what's your sort of philosophy when it comes to that sort of thing? So, at that age, it's, it's more about, I think it's more about setting the movement patterns, making yeah. sure the movement is perfect, mm -hmm. because, like, like in her long-term development, it probably doesn't really matter what she's squatting at 10 years right old, now. Yeah. but it matters that the mechanics are perfect yep. and that the speed is there. And so I'm like, I'm always watching bar speed. Mm -hmm. I really don't want her grinding out lifts. Mm -hmm. I want her to just always be fast out of the hole, catching the bounce, you know, mm -hmm. like controlled down, of course, but something that's going to simulate a clean. Mm -hmm. Like your squats need to be as close to the stand up on the clean as possible. So we don't, she really doesn't miss weights and squats or anything. We're just, Try to make it real fast, explosive, get a stimulus, mm -hmm. and not pushing it too much. What are, in the classic lifts, what are you doing in terms of programming? Do you pay attention to percentages, or do you just keep it at a certain rep range? And if so, what's that range? So, especially like a lot earlier in her training, we do pretty high reps, like maybe fours on snatches even. Okay. Something 
that she has to think about a little bit. Um, something that she can't just mindlessly do, but something where she can be successful. Mm-hmm. And then we usually do a little bit higher reps so that she can make those minute adjustments from rep to rep. Mm. Um, so a little probably higher reps in the beginning and she's like she's so technical now like her lifts really look pretty much the same every time so we push it up a little bit more Mm -hmm. i rarely write out like exact weights so you should be some type of a range and then i'm there watching each rep Mm -hmm. and i'm just kind of looking at the bar speed and the movement Mm -hmm. and um so we have a general plan coming into it and it's really the same with Harrison or any of my athletes like mm-hmm. we have a general plan like a range of what I want to hit but then I'm looking at it from rep to rep and making sure that we're getting the stimulus that we want for that day yeah, yeah. and how far in advance do you typically program um, athletes like that I mean we have like a very general plan for a couple months out mm-hmm. but um i'm writing out the exercises and usually four week blocks got it yeah and a pretty broad rep range mm-hmm. like for each for each workout but then just kind of take it day by day from there mm-hmm. yeah so so is uh i remember talking to koha and she said when she was younger it was like a lot of 70 percent, 80 percent, similar mm-hmm. stuff higher reps yeah and is that about where you keep the youth athletes yeah it's uh, it's definitely a little bit lower i'd say her average working weight is under 80 percent. okay so her average working weight is i mean she's most of the time she's doing triples on snatches mm-hmm. doubles on clean and jerks so that's going to kind of limit her mm-hmm. anyway mm-hmm. like all, all my youth athletes are a mm-hmm. little little bit lower ranges because we're just it's it's practice yeah and that's what that's the way that i phrase it too mm-hmm. it's like all right we're gonna practice snatches just yeah. so it puts them in that mindset of it's not about making the lift it's about we're practicing we're trying to make that lift perfect mm-hmm. doing it over and over yeah i don't think kids i really like I like trying to play kind of play games with them so mm-hmm. we're like all right so we're gonna do we're doing 10 sets all right so to get a point for this set, you got to stick all three snatches, hold it two seconds in the bottom. Okay, you stick it, all three, you get a point. If you take a step, no point. Nice. If you miss a lift, you lose a point. <laughs> so then, and then I can give them a letter grade at the end. I'm like, yeah. all right, well, you missed one of your 10 snatches, so uh, that's minus one point. So easily you're, quantifiable. Yeah, so yeah. you're at 80%. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. That's yeah. yeah, and with the kids, like, the more you can play games like that, just it keeps them interested and involved, and they they want it, They want that letter grade. They're like, I want that A. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. So it works, it works out really well that way. Mm-hmm. With uh, with somebody like this, this young athlete, um, does she have anyone she can look to as like, here's my competition? I feel like she was so far ahead of the game at Youth Nationals, like in the gym. Is that a motivating factor? Um, I don't know. I mean, she, the, the kids are, you know, they're training with Harrison. They're training with yeah. a lot of our like senior team. You know, so they're like, yeah, they're just, I feel like their paradigm's a little bit, little bit skewed like they they see how hard everybody else works and they just to them it's just all normal Mm -hmm. um so like for kendra she's looking at what she needs to make a youth team Mm -hmm. i mean she's only 10 so she's got three more years before yeah. she can even before she can even make a youth team like <laughs> Harrison will hopefully have already been an Olympian before she makes her first youth world team but but she sees those numbers and mm-hmm. well, I don't even mention that she's 31 kilos or whatever and is going to be competing in the 40 but she's looking at the girls that yeah. are 17 and 40, 40 kilos she's like alright those are the numbers I want to hit 45-55 yeah. next year mm-hmm. that's her goal yeah so, yeah. so she's driven then yeah yeah yeah, kid likes it. Yeah, that's great. So you mentioned Harrison was your your first athlete. Mm-hmm. Great success. Yeah. Um, what are were there some of some like mistakes you made that you feel like I really learned this coming out of uh, training Harrison? Obviously, he's a, a success, like he's beyond a success story, right? Yeah, like I don't know if I would change anything exactly going back. I do change. I train my athletes a little differently now. Okay. Um, just having the experience and focusing on the just the technique is better. We do a lot more skill work than I had him do in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And his technique is it's nice now, but it was yeah. um, 
especially in the beginning, just we did so many deadlifts. He was real mm -hmm. strong. Yeah. But his the speed of his pulls just was all the same speed all the way through. Okay. He didn't have that like that pop that mm -hmm. snap that that took a little while to develop, especially on the snatch. We just had to we had to drop it the weight down quite a bit and just work on the speed. Mm -hmm. So probably don't do as much like max effort pulling like I used to have him do. And I think it kind of screws movement patterns up a little bit too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's a lot more pulls and less deadlifts, um, more skill work for sure. Um, with Harrison, we did like a very, we just did basically a linear progression program for the first probably 16 months. Mm -hmm. It was like, is real similar to starting strength. It was like mm -hmm. squat, bench, deadlift, um, squat, press, power clean. And then we did we did some more gymnastics work and some GPP stuff. But mm -hmm. um, I, I want the uh, like my whole youth team like they look very very sharp. Like I'm super yeah. proud of all of their technique. And just, we spent all, we spent a lot of time on it because I think it just will allow them to build. You can build your strength. For a lot longer but strength like, is a lot easier than tech, yeah the yeah tech, well and the after the first tech. first 18 months or two years for the most part those gross movement patterns are pretty much set yeah, yeah. so we spent a lot of time on that and just i know that i can keep progressing them as long as they have a good base those first that first year and a half like that's going to set them up a lot better mm -hmm. well and then to undo something if if you're really yeah if you're building off a terrible technique base yeah, it takes years, it's, right? Years. Yeah, if it's two change. years to build that and set it. It's like double that probably <laughs> to change it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Tell my athletes like every single rep, you either got a little bit better or a little bit worse. You know, like you, you, nothing ever stays the same. Yeah. So you have to make sure you're constantly building on that technique. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it so? You mentioned that a lot of your athletes come from your wife, who's a gymnastics coach. Mm -hmm. um, do you have many athletes with no gymnastics background? And if so, yeah. Oh, so what do you do with it? Because obviously Kendra, right? She comes from, that's a, a one in a, a 10,000 athlete, uh, yeah. maybe more. Maybe, yeah. But somebody, a kid who comes in who's like, yeah, I'm a normal 10, 12-year-old kid. I play some video games and eat pizza. <laughs> what do you do there? Yeah, I mean, it, it depends like where the kid's coming from. I and mean, I got some athletes who are like high-level soccer players and they and they do great too. It's like a little bit, a little bit longer of a process, but mm -hmm. they're successful as well for sure mm -hmm. yeah. um but yeah it just it just depends where the kid's coming from if the kid's 10 and hasn't done anything well i'm not going to put them on a five day a week program they're not going to be training 10 hours a week right, that would be crazy right. yeah. like yeah. someone's kids coming in off the street hasn't done anything it's just a whole lot more basic mm -hmm. it's usually three days a week an hour or so maybe an hour and a half at mm -hmm. the top end mm -hmm. and we're just trying to with them it's just about teaching them how to move i want them to know how to like how to jump run carry squat push pull hinge rotate just like all the basic movement patterns um, because a lot of them have never done never done that or if they play a sport that's like very specific to that sport if they're a baseball player they might not have ever done a, a squat or a proper hinge or anything so in the programs just it's real basic and we build movement progressions from like the most basic things they can't screw up just however long it takes just building them up till they're doing the high level skills so and not every kid's going to be doing snatch clean and jerk mm -hmm. in the first two years yeah, yeah. you know it's like their main sports baseball mm -hmm. well i want to get them prepared for baseball and i want to teach them to just be a good athlete and then then maybe when they're 13 or 14 and then they decide they want to do weightlifting then they got a great base and they can do that yeah so, so are you getting more athletes interested in weightlifting or interested in sort of becoming stronger for their specific sport or kind of a mix of the both of the we two? we have both i mean yeah. we have we have a lot of kids who um are doing strength strength training to complement their sport mm -hmm. but then a lot of the time they're in there and it's like people are doing big snatches and clean and jerks like it's exciting and the, yeah they and the whole, do it, the whole yeah. gym gets quiet and harrison hits a big lift like and everybody cheers like that's how do you not, how do you not just <laughs> want to like take your throat and go snatch at that moment like, <laughs> yeah, yeah i exactly. can't understand it's, it's a how, euphoria that everyone shares when we were you know we were in the training hall yesterday and we were limping through our training and we're watching harrison <laughs> And it's just like we had finished, and I was like, I, I want to train again. Just I watch 
Magic oh. Harrison being in the same room. Power slash 136. Yeah. Like, that, is, yeah. that kind of excitement is, is really contagious. So. Yeah. 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 So a lot of them do transition. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. which is, which great. is great for me. Like, I, I mean, I love coaching weightlifting, of course, yeah. you know, it's yeah. like my, the thing I'm most passionate about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but it's also great. The kids, a lot of them are just, you know, I got a kid who's like all American wrestler just started and like, he's not, like he's going to college for wrestling and it's awesome to see him progress and, and like have those skills transfer to the mat. Like yeah, that's, yeah. that's super cool too. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, now when you're finding athletes or, or athletes are coming to you, what do you look for? I mean, you've got a, a lot of experience now and a number of different athletes. What do you look for, uh, both physically and psychologically that you feel kind of lead to an athlete's success? Okay. Um, well, one of the very first things I do with any athlete is we squat. Yeah. I want to check out their squat. Body usually. weight, just like... So, usually in the beginning, I'll have someone hold on to a plate, just like a five kilo plate. Mm-hmm. Um, they're stretching their arms out in front of them as far as they can reach. And I just have them sit in the bottom and just stay there. And just with the plate in front of you, it forces you to stay upright. Yeah. Right from that first move, and I know how much work I have ahead of me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. like I can, I can work with anybody. But if I go straight down, they're straight up and down, great positions. Like I know it's going to be, I'm going to have an easier time. Quicker, quicker. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. going to be easier. Quicker. Yeah. Um, but the the me- mentally, like I want, I want to see a kid who can focus and like tell me instructions. They look me in the eye. Like, okay, got it, coach. And then they go and do it. It's like, I know that they're going to be set up for success. Yeah. And and I want athletes who are going to do all those little things, who are going to take the time to write in their notebook and actually keep a training log. We go over nutrition and meal plans with the kids. So like with Kendra, she... Um, Two years ago at Youth National, she was 35 kilos. That's so when she was nine. Last year, she was 31 kilos at 10, which sounds kind of crazy, but we didn't really focus on the weight exactly too much. I just, I had her and her mom come over and we, I taught them how to meal plan. I wrote out her macros, taught them to how to meal plan and prep all of her meals because she does homeschool at the gym. So she comes in the morning at nine o'clock and leaves the gym at eight o'clock PM. So she just has all of her meals and she and her mom, they do all their meal prep together Sunday nights. And the kid went from, you know, a little bit pudgy to like a very lean, very athletic looking kid. Mm -hmm. Uh, Helped her performance in gymnastics and weightlifting. And she's diligent and she does it because she wants to. Yeah. So having a kid who they have to have that buy in. Mm -hmm. And if I have a kid who's gonna do everything that they that they can, if they're gonna do all those little steps, like I know that they're gonna be they're gonna maximize their own potential at least. And that's the most rewarding thing as a coach. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you ever get concerned about like, you know, there's horror stories about gymnastics parents and that's probably a stereotype too. Do you ever worry like is this the parent? Is this the kid? Like how do you distinguish or, um, or do you just sort of not? I, I, I can tell. When yeah. I coached gymnastics, there were definitely a lot of parents who were forcing their kids into it. I don't feel like I have that issue at all, even a little bit. Like, all my all my kids, they come in and they work super hard, and their parents aren't there watching them. Like, they're there working hard because they want to be successful. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't dealt with that at all as a weightlifting coach. All, really? the, all the kids who are there, they're because they want to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they see Harrison snatch. So I <laughs> well, and it's the that. best sport, right? <laughs> it's the best, obviously. <laughs> I, uh, obviously, I think, yeah, of course you'd want to be there. Why wouldn't you want to be in the gym snatching? Um, from, a, from a technical standpoint, if we talk about the lifts, so you just mentioned like things you look for, right, in a young athlete. Uh, in the lifts, what are you, you know, what are the basic things that you think, this is what I want to see, obviously individual variation for people, but like what are your basics for the lifts? Um, I don't know. It's, I mean, technique. I don't know. It's it's kind of a hard question. I'm, especially in the beginning, I want the lifts looking just as orthodox as possible. Mm-hmm. After a couple years, 
then maybe the kid will figure out some idiosyncrasies that work for them. But in the beginning, I just want it as, as textbook as possible. Mm -hmm. So, I'm, of course, the biggest thing is I'm looking for positions. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most important thing, making sure they're staying right on top of the bar, that they are uh, get the shins vertical at the knee, which I think is huge because so many kids especially have a hard time activating the posterior chain yeah especially anyone who's done a lot of field sports because almost everything takes place off the balls of the feet and is moving forward yeah, yeah. weightlifting is one of the few sports that kind of takes place like a little more on the back of the foot mm -hmm. um a lot more hamstring development so i want to see them on top of the bar um just keeping their shoulders right on top of the bar as long as possible and just hitting the good positions from the start the knee bring it all the way into the hip so like position is probably the most important and then I'm looking for a good rhythm. I want to see that the bar is accelerating. There's some some speed on the top, popping it off the hip. Mm -hmm. Reactivity in the jerk, like make sure the, the timing's there. And then once they have the positions and the rhythm down, then we want the overall speed of the lift. Mm -hmm. um, looking for that. So. Now, do you have a specific um, like world-class athlete that you reference a lot in terms of like, okay, these are the positions that I'd love to see you mimic? For different body types or things like that, or yeah, I'll show I'll show hook grip videos of yeah. try to get a, an athlete that has similar proportions to mm -hmm. the person mm -hmm. I'm showing. Um, so I love Nork Vardanian's techniques, probably my favorite. Um, Tatiana Kashrina, of course, probably, <laughs> of course. The absolute yeah. best. Um, uh, we have some hook grip the sequence photos which is really helpful to be like all right this is your position at the knee i'm going to show them the video i'm like all right look at your shin angle yeah. here and look where Where'd rebecca koas yeah are like straight another vertical. great reference yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, we have our tatiana poster right behind one of the platforms sequence which is great yeah because i could literally point to any you know anything for us this is perfect, perfect. and yeah. then we often have like a co -op training video yeah. Or, yeah. or something from hook grip or all things gym yeah mm-hmm Huh. That's yeah, great. Kasharina and Koha and Norik too. Yeah, I mean, especially... Post-Armenia, I'll say. Yeah. You, have you seen his technique before he trained in Armenia? No, I don't think so. It was different. Yeah, it was uh, different. He trained yeah. a lot with his father, Yurik, uh, who was obviously, I mean, he's, you know, second ever. highest Sinclair ever. Um, but Norik, his technique looked much more like his dad, a little more unconventional. Hip, yeah, hips kind of come up quicker. Um, yeah, the started with the really hips pretty Really far high. forward, yeah. 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 And yeah. he went to Armenia, and I would agree, is that now, like... It was so crisp. I yeah. so crisp. Love watching him lift. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Every lift looks identical, whether, mm -hmm. regardless of the weight. I mean, looks like amazing. he's getting healthy again, too. Like, he's yeah. training again, and yeah. uh, it's cool. he's got that training center in Colorado Springs. Yeah, yeah. In Jennings. So, have you been out there? I haven't been to their place, no. Okay. Uh and, and uh, from what I understand now, you're doing a lot of traveling with the different world teams that you're going to in different training sessions. I mean, how has that yeah. been both as a gym owner and coach um, with your other athletes and things? I mean, it's it's a little tough. I wouldn't trade those experiences for anything. I mean, it's, it's great, but it is, it is a little bit tough. So we just moved into a new location. And then the next weekend, I left for Uzbekistan for... <laughs> A full two weeks, which is a, li a little bit tough, but um, my assistant coach, Kiola, he's great. He does a really good job with the whole team, and we got a lot of people helping out, and so it it, work it works out okay. It, I mean, it's not ideal. It's like I'd love to be able to split and be both places, but mm -hmm. so it, it's tough, but I think it works out well, and I think that, I think my gym members understand. I mean, yeah. it's like we're going to the world championships. It's kind of, kind of a <laughs> kind big of a deal. <laughs> Now, do you have any um, any coaches who who you would consider you know close mentors for you um, at this point? Uh, I mean, I've met so many people who like. But when we go to all the international trips, like that's one of the things I look forward to the most is just sitting down with all the coaches. I mean, there's really every every coach there has earned their earn their place there and I respect all of them so much mm -hmm. I mean especially like when I was first coming up I just reading everything I could from all these people I mean 
really all of them like they're so many coaches i don't want to i don't want to put out names i don't want to yeah, leave yeah, anybody yeah, yeah. out that's you know okay. like yeah, well okay. maybe i'll ask you a sp- specific one then because i know that you and harrison worked with piros dimas mm-hmm. um i think leading up to anaheim last year is that right yeah how was that experience it was great i mean um i think technically he's great but really i think the most that we got from him was just the the mentality that you have to have i mean piros is great in the back he's great with the the technical side of things and counting and everything but just he puts the athletes in such a good headspace i mean yeah. he was such an amazing competitor yeah. to like pull it out when he really needed it you know like and just having that michael jordan type figure in the back with you mm-hmm. i think that that adds a lot yeah so. it's, it's got to be inspiring <laughs> oh, yeah. to have uh you yeah, know your me, shoulders the rubbed most by uh, in history. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and for me it's like i don't even really care about those celebrities at all but probably the only time i've ever been starstruck in my life is the first time i met piros demos like oh, that's yeah. the same with us <laughs> yeah, right? i remember same though we went to go we went to go interview him and we were like remember we we're in the van and someone's like he was like in the cafe we were meeting him at before we went to the gym and someone's like he's in the cafe and like, looking through and yeah it was we, we uh, spotted him in like butterflies and stuff seriously like, yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean and, you know he's such like a down-to-earth guy. Oh, yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah, he's so cool. We spent a lot of, eating a lot of meals with the guy now, you know, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it's, it's been great having him on Team USA, though. But yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. Huge, huge yeah, benefit. Yeah, absolutely. I think that everybody really appreciates his insights. I mean, it's, yeah. it's cool, too, to see him, like, in the background getting just as excited for our athletes, too, Oh, yeah. As, like, as he was once uh, upon a time, you know, like, for his own lifts. Yeah. And now he's back there, like, cheering on and coaching Harrison or CJ or something, so. Yeah. That's been that's been exciting for us. Mm-hmm. Me too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, what's Harrison's training like these days? Or, or I guess, at what point did you look at him and say, "All right, now we need to do you know four days a week, five days a week is not enough. Now we need to to take him to the next level." It was, I don't know, it was fairly gradual. I mean, he he started three days a week for probably the first year and a half or two years then we moved to four days a week for about two years he's been doing five he does five days a week now mm-hmm. i guess i guess six thursdays are just an accessory day mm-hmm. he doesn't even touch a barbell he just does just a lot of gpp the stuff that we don't have time for mm-hmm. during the week which is kind of good because i'll program a lot of accessory and sometimes he's just just beat by yeah. the end of his clean and jerks so like all right well we have kind of that buffer day we can push that over to thursday and then we're still at least getting it in mm-hmm. the stuff like just the like a lot of shoulder work and abs and all the all that basic stuff a little bit of real easy cardio and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um some strong men work and stuff mm-hmm. but he does he does five days a week right now um with double days on monday wednesday friday mm-hmm. but it's not like we're not doing twice the workload it's pretty much just splitting one training session into two workouts so he can come in and maybe do some technique work and then squats or pulls mm-hmm. and then do his like his olympic lifts in the evening mm-hmm. and he can go home and eat and hopefully sleep a little bit in between is yeah. he doing both classic lifts in in a session or are you like with kendra are you focusing on he's, snatch one day clean and jerk movements and other he's usually doing both but there'll be an emphasis on one so mm-hmm. he might be doing like heavy on snatch and then he's doing power clean and jerk or something so it's a little bit lighter mm-hmm. or maybe it's a technique work or blocks or something like that mm-hmm. But there's usually one one heavy lift during the day, um, and then he squats three days a week. He back squats back squats twice, front squats once, and that's worked out really well for years. He's been he doesn't doing, have a strength issue. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the squatting he's issue, doing his strength. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like like really nothing nothing very fancy on the squats. It's, yeah, we've pretty much been doing a, kind of a modified Texas method since he was like 14 and he brings his squat up every single every single training cycle (laughs) and we're not really even placing a huge emphasis on it i mean he's front squatted 200 for nine or something like that it's like (laughs) well it's like the leg strength leg strength isn't really the issue and why waste the energy on getting yeah yeah so we're putting putting more of our focus on the pulls and especially on the especially for snatch and and jerk right now Mm -hmm. um 
but his legs just seem to get strong and kind of no matter what we do. Mm-hmm. That's so it's nice. nice, nice, nice problem to have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looks like he's settling in at 81, right? That's the plan for the next. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Two, three years. Um, when the weight classes first came out and 89 wasn't going to be a class. It I, baffles me, by the way. Yeah. Uh, it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, they took out pretty much like the very top of the bell curve. They just like, literally, that's what he said last night. Yeah. Just like eliminated that whole class. Mathematically, just, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Um, but now like we've kind of come to terms with it and I, I think 81 is actually going to be really good for him mm-hmm. because he's going to be competitive right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he's got some gold medal event or gold level events coming up mm-hmm. soon. So it's good that he's going to probably start earning some points, some good points already. Whereas mm-hmm. if it was 89, he'd be kind of growing into it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it that would definitely take a little while. I mean, he got, yeah. he got third at Worlds in the 77. Mm-hmm. And then um, I guess he got third in the 85s at the junior worlds but it was like it was just a it was a big jump he just was not yeah. he just hadn't had time to fill into his weight class yeah. and he weighed in at 82 right right <laughs> so probably I, without cutting at all right at just all. yeah no, probably no. eating right before maybe <laughs> yeah. a cheeseburger on the yeah. on the scale <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> well I, I think 81 is gonna be good for him um it's kind of tough because he is 18 and most most people are gonna put on a lot of weight between 18 and 20 yeah but i'm hoping it won't be too hard for him because he has been training already for six years he's been lifting for a long time so i don't think there's going to be like a huge spike in body weight like most people will at that at that age yeah i think he'll be fine he's walking around at like 82 right now perfect great maybe, maybe heavier after this weekend found a <laughs> couple the buffet yeah, yeah. yeah. all you can eat giant bags of gummy bears people gave him <laughs> <laughs> all, right, so, all right well we'll get back back to weight by next week i'm sure so are you guys pretty strict in terms of your in terms of the meal planning um from week to week pretty pretty much he's got yeah. such a fast metabolism yeah. that he doesn't have to worry too much mm-hmm. about like about it an excess of calories um so he does he eats i think he eats a, a bit of sugar but he's also burning through so much it's not yeah it's not a huge deal yeah. He is real good about making sure that he's getting I've set I set up his nutrition plan when he was a little kid too and taught we went over with his mom and stuff, so they eat really, really well. I mean he's like the whole family had vegetables every single meal. Every meal's got protein, a good complex carb source, mm-hmm. vegetables, mm-hmm. healthy fats every single meal. So he's like he's getting his protein in every couple hours. He's hitting all those all those big numbers that he needs to. Mm-hmm. And then I don't worry about it too much if he's eating a bit of sugar as long as his body weight is is in line. There's always room, room for a carrot cake at the end of the night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, as long as, as long as his body weight's good, he's hitting all of his, he's getting what he needs in his system, it's, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. His family, too, I just got to say, they're the nicest people. It's so it's such really, a yeah. I feel like, you know, not only were you fortunate in his athletic development, but, like, could you ask for, like, Bet, a nicer, better guy. Individual? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's a great guy, and then you meet the parents, you're like, uh, of course. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Jim sense. and Tracy are. I mean, they're the best parents. They're so supportive. Yeah. Um. I mean, he got Harrison got really lucky in a lot of ways. Not just the genetics. I mean, he got a great support system. He's got a family who, like, you know, can afford to to give him everything that he needs and mm-hmm. all the travel. It's like he's very lucky. He's and his family's been amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really good. Do you have athletes where that's more of a struggle, where it's like, well, we we can't control the diet for X, Y, or Z, or and... um, not not too bad. I mean, like, really, I think a lot of it is the parents want to help their kids. Just a lot of times they don't they don't know what to do. Okay. So yeah, so I just give them the information, and all all of my parents have really been really been great. Um, I haven't had. I haven't had issues with that at all. Like, if they know what to do, for the most part, they they do their best. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it can be hard though, like when it's just such a change from from what they're used to. Yeah. Um, we go, yeah, we go over it, and 
it's it's a process just like with anybody but i think that everybody's doing pretty well with it mm-hmm. yeah now kevin i have a, a baby due in january do you take infants <laughs> <laughs> give them maybe eight the years meal plan. congratulations though <laughs> thank you uh so you know it seems like clearly you've developed uh, a great repertoire with working with youth athletes junior athletes uh have you thought about like or maybe you've done this and just no but opening up the gym to training camps for youth athletes in the U.S. and saying, yeah, come to our gym for, you know, because uh, you're clearly a resource for training youth athletes and for teaching athletes and parents things like eating, things like recovery. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that something on the horizon or, or is yeah, it happening I'd, already? I would really like to. Um, we just our gym was pretty small before and we're mm-hmm. finally in a, a much bigger spot. We've got 4,000 square feet. So mm-hmm. I'd really like to start doing that for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, it was really a bummer when the training center closed. Yeah. That's the thing. There it's isn't that resource yeah. right now. They have the, so like I just had um, one of my 13 year old girls just got back from the Ohio training camp at Rogue. And that was, mm-hmm. that was awesome. Okay. That was really fun. I hope that they're going to do more of those and, and maybe open it up a little bit more. It was, it was very selective, which is good. That's the point of the camp. Yeah, but sure. it'd be cool to get some of those athletes who are just kind of on that threshold, too. They're not, not quite there, but have the potential to be eventually. Mm-hmm. So I would definitely like to do that. And I've, 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 I've talked to a lot of the athletes from that have already made teams and from the camps and to their coaches and mm-hmm. um, setting some stuff up. Good. So I would yeah, that's really fantastic. like to, yeah. yeah. I think it'd be awesome. Fun. Yeah. I have uh, a youth athlete. She's 13. I think she's great. And yeah, she's not at that world level yet, but we don't have anyone else in our area training at her level right now. And I feel like... And at youth Nationals, it was great because she saw like, oh yeah, these are, these are people like me, same interests, and I can be in this mix. And so to have somewhere to go for, yeah, a week and a few days, something like that. To see, just to get together and meet your peers too. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and that's one of the best things about those training camps. It's like just, you know, you meet meet all these kids who have like a the same interest because most most of the kids they go to school and nobody knows what they're doing. Right. Yeah. It's, it's tough. Yeah. Even Harrison, nobody nobody at Harrison School <laughs> even knows like it's just how what he did or anything. Is, like yeah. they they're like, oh, you're that weightlifter guy, right? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> he got back from Worlds last year. Like, where were you? You're gone for like three weeks <laughs> since the World Championships. Right. Oh my I mean, gosh. And you know, uh, as a high schooler. And that's the reality. Oh. And this is, even though the sport, you know, we were here, right, with 1,600 people. And, you know, we remember it when it was 16 people at the national <laughs> meet. And so we think, to us, it's like, this growth is exponential. It's amazing. It's huge. But it's you like forget, a, it's still like... little drop in a big bucket. Yeah. yeah. It's a tiny slice yeah. of uh, a niche sport. And it can be challenging. I mean, that's why national meets are great, right? It's because you meet people who have your interests, who you can talk to, and they understand your lifestyle. Yeah. And then a couple times a year it's like a reunion yeah yeah, yeah it's fun. Exactly. Like every, I'll, it's one of the best things about all these meets like looking around like oh all these all these people have yeah. built these relationships with you share that same a lot passion of fun. Yeah, yeah exactly yeah. it's great it's yeah great. I mean, I think that's why these camps are, are a great idea. Yeah, you know, if you end up doing it at your place or if other places do it, just because, you know, for us, I think uh, a couple times a year is is great. But as a youth athlete, a year is a long time, and so if you can yeah. see your buddies like four, five, six times a year. Yeah, if you're yeah if you're ten years old, a year is ten percent of your life. Exactly. Right. <laughs> like that. That's a long. That's, that's, that's a, long a great time. point. Yeah. yeah. That's a long time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and yeah, like twenty percent of any life that you can actually remember. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I think it's important for kids to have something to look forward to. They're Mm -hmm. in the gym training hard every day, and it's hard to be like, all right, we're going to train these 10 hours this week for youth nationals coming up in nine months. Yeah. Right. right. You know, this, now that we have the series, that's, that's helped a lot. It's too. something. Yeah. 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 But like for a lot of sports, they're competing, you know, a couple times a month or every, or every weekend for, yeah, yeah, yeah. for a big stretch of time. Right. And, and so, you see right. your teammates in school or something or, or at the games or something. So yeah, it's very different. Yeah. Different way to build a community. Yeah. And we're happy to hear that Harrison is going to school <laughs> close by. Yes. To continue training, which is yep. a... Uh, starts UW at the, I think, the end of this month. That's so, great. Yep. That's great. He's taking a pretty light load, which I think is good. Yeah. He's just taking two classes right now. Mm-hmm. Which I think is perfect. They'll 
let him still train hard, focus on 2020. Mm -hmm. But then it's not such a such a single focus. Like I, I want him to have a social life and have other yeah. things to take his mind off of just training. Cause I feel like you get in, if you only have one thing in your life, like you just kind of get in a rut. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, I guess spread it out and I give me, you know, dangerous. Be for him. <laughs> Cause, uh, if what, yeah, listen, the sport's going to end for everyone at some point. Of course. And if you don't have something else, I think that's, oh, yeah. that's a challenge. Yeah, yeah for sure. Okay. Now he was, am I right in that he was pre-med or interested in being a doctor at some point? Yep. That's okay. what, that's what he's thinking is, is pre-med. Mm -hmm. He's a, Real smart kid. Good to have a team I mean, doctor. Could it be the three doctors? <laughs> three, doc three doctors, yeah. <laughs> I can see that. I, that's three right, doctors. yeah. We, uh, let's see if we can get him through. And, I uh, think our, our training sessions would be a little bit more active. <laughs> if he were one of the, At the uh, very least, he'd, like, he'd bring up the, 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 the know, average, average weight. So. <laughs> That'd be good. That'd be good. By the time he's a doctor, we, we're going to need all the help that, uh, that we can get at that point. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> So how much are you still training these days? Um, I'm I still train every day. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I don't see myself competing anytime soon. Exactly. Um, in weightlifting or CrossFit or, or anything. In either point, yeah. right now. Um, just kind of taking a backseat to my coaching. Yeah, that's yeah. What I'm really passionate about right now. Um, but it's been fun. Like I, I still really enjoy training and mm -hmm. actually not having, not having to compete. I, I'm probably enjoying my training more honestly before it's like it was a very rewarding experience but the the training itself was it felt like a job yeah. when i was training <laughs> like when i made the crossfit games in 2015 it was i mean it's it's stressful it's it really is like a whole nother job i'd get to the gym at 8 a.m i'd be doing intervals run bike ski row work usually an hour of intervals coach from 9 to 11 get some food in me, start doing my weightlifting strength training from like noon to two, Jeez. eat, coach until seven, and then I do my CrossFit conditioning from seven to eight thirty <laughs> or nine, you know, so it's like it was a it was a full day. Um and I, I always I always like training, of course, but it it was hard. And now it's it's um it's it's just more fun. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's not. I don't have that pressure. I can kind of do some new things. We did a did a triathlon three weeks ago, which was like very really? out of my wow. very out of my comfort zone. You know, How'd you do? Come, How was it? It was fun. It was, uh, I'm never. I'm five foot seven and 190 pounds. Like I'm never gonna be a. <laughs> I'm never gonna be a competitive triathlete. You know, but short way lift your legs. Yeah, good yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it, but it was fun. You know, it's like. <laughs> in a phase where I was doing a bunch of just monostructural work, like more low intensity anyway. Um, mm -hmm. So it was good motivation. And some yeah. of my teammates did it with me and we had a good time. It was like pretty much learn how to swim this year. I, mean, I could, I could swim. <laughs> I could, but like to swim a half mile a year ago would have been like a real daunting task. And yeah. uh, we've been swimming once a week at the pool for like the last year. And, so I went, we just did, I did a sprint triathlon. It wasn't anything crazy, but, um, swam it was an 800 meter swim that went really well. Mm -hmm. The bike was hard. Uh, the assault bike I found does not translate to the road <laughs> at all, <laughs> at all. I was getting, <laughs> so I, it was funny at the, the triathlon, they wrote everybody's age on their calf. Mm -hmm. And so I'm watching these people pass and I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, dude, like that dude's 50. And, I'm like, the girl, and then a lady goes down. So she's 45. I'm a games athlete. What is happening right now? Um, but it was, it was, I mean, it was humbling, but it was, but it was really fun. And yeah. then the, the run went pretty well. I like clearly not a runner, but got off the bike. My legs felt like lead, like stumbling, just about dropped my bike. But, um, <laughs> I ended up doing the 5K in like 22 minutes and 22.10 or something like that. It's so great. It was, yeah. It's a decent, okay time. So For weightlifter, I mean. Right? So weightlifter, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah was, I couldn't do that fresh, let alone after a bike ride. Or, <laughs> yeah, so I'd, my goal was to get under an hour and a half for the sprint try, and I did an hour 29. So Hey. Met my goal. Yeah, it's perfect. I'm on to the next Congrats. thing now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Probably do another one next year, like one a year, I think. That's great. It's good. That's but, great. Yes, but right now it's like, especially with tra Harrison training for 2020, and we're going to yeah. be traveling so much. Mm -hmm. like, I just don't really think it's feasible to try to make the games or anything right now. Yeah. So yeah. I took 
I took this year off of regionals the year before. Um, I got, I was one place out of qualifying, maybe one or two places out of qualifying, but it was just tough. I was in Thailand for two and a half weeks, two weeks before the game or before regionals. So it's like, and I don't see that slowing down anytime soon. Yeah. 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 And like now with the business expanding and stuff, I just kind of have other, other things to focus on and yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Now, how would you compare the joy derived from your own athletic endeavors into the success of your athletes that you coach? Um, I honestly, I think I like, I like coaching more. Yeah. Yeah. I've always loved the training and I've never honestly liked competing myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I always like being in the gym and I love the whole process. The grind. Uh, the grind. Yeah. I yeah. like, I like yeah. the grind. Um, and I don't know, I get, I get just as invested in my own, ath- my athletes as my own athletics, you know? Mm-hmm. So like this weekend we got 19 people competing and it's like i feel so so heavily invested in every single one of them yeah you know? so it's, it's, uh, it's more it's stressful fun. i feel it's, coaching and, yeah. i mean I, I think it's great i love it but yeah like yeah i was uh i was nervous competing obviously like anyone then i got to coaching and i was like this is worse because like, <laughs> you feel res- you're responsible for someone else it's yeah. like you know yeah. you mess up as a competitor you feel i feel bad like feel i don't like, down or something yeah but, but it's you... pretty much it's it's on you but as a yeah. as a coach it's like yeah you're responsible for everybody and you play a big part in their success and mm-hmm. i see how hard everybody works every single day and it's like i i want it for them so bad yeah you know? yeah so want to will it for him yeah <laughs> <laughs> what do you do for your athletes or for your own training for recovery and and at what point do you start to suggest uh real specific recovery methods i think the biggest thing is sleep sleep and nutrition i think that's i think that's the biggest thing um so i every single day when someone comes into the gym i ask them how are you how are you feeling and how your how's your body doing and it's not like it's not just like a, a pleasantry. Like I really need to know like how everything's actually feeling and then like, all right, so how much, how much sleep did you get? How, mm-hmm. like, do you feel like you're in that sympathetic fight or flight state or do you feel like you're actually in a place where you can like down regulate and, and get into that rest digest state, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'm just kind of monitoring that throughout the, throughout the training cycle. Um, we can make modifications to the program if they're like if they're always toned up and maybe we're changing that up a little bit um maybe we're doing breathing exercises at the at the end of the session just to get back like just to tone everything down mm-hmm. um and then for the, the smaller stuff it's kind of whatever makes the athlete feel good we have some norma at the gym that usaw sent us and i think a lot of people like that a lot i think that's been great what is this Normatex. it's a they're like um it's a compression system so you put your legs in these giant inflatable boot things that come all the way up to your thigh and it it's like gradient pressure and squeezes it from the bottom up and then lets the blood drain out i don't really know the science behind it that well (laughs) sounds good (laughs) but it it makes it makes your legs feel good if they're sending it to the gym uh, they want to send us i'm not gonna Um, run it away (laughs) We can write a review for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of whatever makes the athlete feel good. We have those yeah. at the gym. Um, I think when we get back, Harrison has a sauna in his uh, garage that he's going to bring. Nice. So we'll have a just an infrared sauna. Mm-hmm. Um, we have, a lot of people like a complex unit or something like that. Mm-hmm. So if it helps you, great. But really, I think the biggest thing is just dialing in your nutrition and making sure you get enough sleep. Mm-hmm. If you cover those two bases, like you're going to be pretty well set up. Yeah. I think that's 90% of it. And, and what do you recommend for sleep? Or like in terms of hours per day? I know it's going to be a little different for each athlete, but yeah, I mean, I think eight's kind of the minimum minimum. Yeah. Minimum should be eight. And then setting a sleep schedule. That's ideally the same. Like I want the athletes, uh, I want athletes waking up at the exact same time mm-hmm. every single day. Yeah. And if you can get to bed at the same time, that's even better, but especially waking up at the same time yeah. every day and get the, yeah. 
as a gym owner and coach, how good are you at, at keeping uh, that schedule? Um, probably some work to be done. <laughs> <laughs> We're not judging. We're not, not, not as good as it should be. <laughs> on my third coffee this morning. So you don't need to the, practice what you do. Yeah, 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 coffee not and energy getting, drinks, uh, especially this week. It was, it was tough. My, my last athlete started her session at 8 last night, so we got done at 10. That's late, yeah. yeah. And then, like, we're here in Vegas, you know, so it's like I want to... You know, I want to actually see all my Vegas gym members. Thing, like, all it? my gym members are together the whole day. I feel like I've hardly seen any of them because I've been in the back coaching them the whole time. Yeah. yeah. Come in the back. Like, oh, hey, what's up? It's the first time I've seen you all weekend. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. We, like, we went out last night and I got back after midnight. And then I had a 8 a.m. session this morning. So, it's just, like, a little, little rundown this weekend. But yeah. usually I'm, I'm pretty good. Pretty good about getting to bed by midnight at least and mm-hmm. wake up at eight every day. Yeah. So yeah. I'm usually getting eight hours. It's good. Was it different when you were training for the games? I was sleeping ten. Really? Kind of, yeah. Yeah. And trying to trying to take a half hour nap in the middle of the day. Yeah. In addition to the ten. In addition to the ten. Wow. And really, like Muhammad, he was like you know, this is uh, Muhammad Begalia. I don't know if you've yeah. seen him lift. But when he was in Uzbekistan, he said they were doing like 10 a night plus a two-hour nap, I think. Yeah. Eight to 10 a night and a two-hour nap midday. Yeah. yeah. If, you yeah. Can, if you can sleep 12 hours, I mean, that's it's huge. that's great. It feels like, yeah, it feels like yeah. your I mean, your recovery is through the roof that way. Like the You're more, not the fighting more you gravity as long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get horizontal. Get like, horizontal. Like, that's what I'd say. Yeah. 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 Well, and horizontal. even if you're not, even if you're not actually falling asleep, if you can just take 30 minutes in the middle of the day and um, just kind of downregulate, yeah. you know, focus on your breathing or mm-hmm. something, I would always do like a just like a body scan. I'd lie down and just like go from my feet coming up and just like feeling each part of my body and just kind of like, right, how's this feeling? And just kind of going through that meditative state. And I always felt like that really helped me recover mm-hmm. a lot. Mm-hmm. Do you, uh, do you train any of that with your athletes? Things like body scan or mindfulness or uh, visualization, anything for competitive training? Probably not as much as I should, mm-hmm. especially when I was competing in gymnastics. I always benefited a lot from visualizations mm-hmm. it's gymnastics is it's like it's like a snatch you have such a small margin of error right, right. so i i always found it real beneficial I tried working with harrison on it and he didn't like it he would like visualize negative outcomes too much I'm like all right well okay. you're a great competitor almost yeah. always maximize your potential for the day we're not gonna <laughs> no, i'm not gonna screw it yeah. up no, i'm not gonna change anything for me i always found it beneficial and i try to talk to my athletes about the way that I would do things. I would always visualize something from a first person point of view. And then I visualize from a third person point of view. So like watching, I visualize like through the judges minds. Yeah. Watch me. And then I would go disassociate even farther and watch the audience member watching the judge watching me. Interesting. Trying to do it perfectly. Yeah. 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 And for you that worked for you. For me, I always, found it beneficial i could i would run through all my routines every night in my head mm-hmm. and then but when i got to compete it's like i'd already done it so many times right so I knew what right, it was right. Feel like and yeah, your mind had gone through the paces yeah so for me i found it beneficial i don't know how many of my athletes actually do that probably not very many <laughs> yeah yeah but, but it, it, it's something that like it's an extra if, tool in the toolbox yeah, right it's somebody struggling they can say okay let's let's try this you know so that's that's a great tool to have yeah you know, the more I hear about gymnastics, the more I, I really feel like it is. There's nothing better for weightlifting. There I isn't. It's a great yeah. sport in its own right, but as like a precursor for life. <laughs> well, well for it makes my job real easy. When I get a kid who's a high level gymnast, especially, not even they don't even have to be a high level. Like Harrison was only a level six, mm-hmm. but just having that that foundation, I think. It, yeah, I, I agree. It's probably the best the best base you can come into it with. Yeah. I think gymnasts, um, dancers, martial artists, mm-hmm. skaters, they mm-hmm. all just they all pick it up real quickly. And plus with your background in gymnastics, you already have an understanding of what these young athletes are capable of in a sense. Mm-hmm. Cuz I have never really worked with any youth athletes. I think you're beginning to over the last few years 
you know, sometimes I think, oh, you got to be so careful. But then, like you say, well, most some of these athletes are used to work, working 30 hours a yeah. week on general, uh, you know, general body weight exercises. I mean, that's a ton of volume. Yeah. And uh, so your understanding of that is probably hugely beneficial to know yeah. what they're what they're capable of. Yeah. I mean, ranges. I think what you have to be careful, mm-hmm. careful with with the beginning athletes is just setting them up for success later on Mm -hmm. but like honestly kids are not fragile yeah i mean (laughs) like little kids are like almost indestructible i mean you want them to have perfect technique Mm -hmm. you want to set everything up but it's not because they're more fragile than a senior athlete yeah by any means i mean little kids you watch them take huge crashes and falls in gymnastics and they get up and they're fine whereas a adult would be having a hard time you know getting up three month recovery yeah, yeah. <laughs> their, their recovery time goes it's just totally different paradigm it seems yeah, yeah. i yeah. You know i ask all my athletes every day how are you feeling how's your body yeah. i ask the kids it's like you sore and like they usually just laugh at me like, 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 no athlete. why would i be sore what are you talking about <laughs> like every now and then you're like oh legs are a little sore but like otherwise i'm like what you're like, <laughs> like really really you're that, not would, sore? Be, like, that would be so nice I did it to yesterday. You're not yeah. sore, really? <laughs> it's totally different. It's really, it's great, though. Yeah, it's wonderful. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, so what, uh, well, Brett, are there athletes right now in, in the U.S. that you're really excited about watching coming up? So obviously, Kendra, one of your own, Harrison, one of your own, but are there other athletes you think, man, this is exciting, especially with the new weight classes or especially with what's, you know, Tokyo coming up? Um, there's a lot of youth athletes that I think are real impressive. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I got, I got a couple more besides just Kendra in the pipeline that I'm excited about, um, that I think will be making national teams, international teams real soon. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of talent through the youth ranks. I mean, yeah. just a lot of, a lot of young kids, juniors. I mean, I don't know. I don't know about specifically, um, I know that kid Hampton Morris is that kid's crushing it. Mm-hmm. He just did really well. Just watched him. I think the kid's like thirteen or mm-hmm. so. Watched him squat one hundred and fifty for a triple last night. It was like <laughs> so easy. Um, I think the future's really bright. I don't know that specifics exactly. But. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I I agree. With you. I mean, we've been involved in the sport for fifteen, maybe more. even more years than that, and uh, the excitement around the youth. Uh, the youth of weightlifting has never been what it is now. I mean, it really is a, a bright spark, and I think you have a big yeah. part of that. I mean, it's finally like the thing that everyone knew we needed for years yeah. too. Yeah, exactly. It was, you know, it's great to get athletes who are older into the sport, and you know, we've had some successful athletes who started late in life. But I mean, it's like gymnastics. There's a window, and mm-hmm. yeah. once it once that that passes yeah you're fighting the odds yeah for a while it was like kevin doherty was having some good youth success and that was it maybe not it but yeah yeah but yeah close to being it you Mm -hmm. know or or it uh, in terms of like a systematic sort of every year you had a few athletes that were having some success lots of great athletes coming out of hassle free yeah yeah Yeah, they have such a great program they do so many kids Mm -hmm. through the doors you know you're gonna get some talent Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah Now, how much does your wife, aside from, let's say, uh, a little feeder system for athletes, <laughs> is she helping coach in the weightlifting at all or in the gymnastics portion of the weightlifting? Not not so much because she's coaching, she's coaching gymnastics in the evening at the same time that I'm coaching weightlifting. Okay. So, um, no. I mean, the, the kids all love her, and she's great with the, the support and everything and part of the team, but she doesn't really take on a coaching role with weightlifting. Mm-hmm. She hasn't been tempted to, to jump ship and be a weightlifter as well. <laughs> she is a weightlifter. She's a weightlifter, yeah, too. She, yeah, she just competed yesterday. What? Really? really? Yeah. What session? Uh, she was... Let's see, she was the... I don't want to screw this up. <laughs> You're being you recorded right now. You I was coaching. She was in the... We can't edit this. She was this. the 64D session. <laughs> we can't yeah. edit this later. We need to. This is her second um, second American Open Series. That's awesome. That's great. That's yeah. great. This year, or did she do one last year as well? She did She did the one in Grand Rapids last year. Oh, okay. cool. That's yeah, great. Right. It was a good meet. Yeah, that was really... I like that place a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That place is good. And, uh, this year's Youth Nationals it was pretty great too yeah like, yeah I liked that place a lot mm-hmm. I think Vegas is great too I wish they'd just do it 
this meet here every year I think would be fantastic. Yeah. I would like, I mean, you'd never, you'd come 10 years in a row and never run out of things to do here. Yeah, no, that's very true. Yeah. I think they've floated ideas like that in the past of like, what if we just, you know, this, I mean, the Arnold, right? Yeah. Every year it's in Columbus, Ohio. Same weekend, pretty much. It makes yeah. planning easy and you know what you're getting into. Yeah, I think there there's some some merit to the idea of like here's where the series happens. It's distributed throughout the country, and that's it. You know what you're doing for the next five years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would remove a lot of like the monotony of the bidding process and all that sort of stuff. You yeah, know? and I don't know how much they even do the bidding process anymore. If they yeah. just go to cities, but yeah, I'd be down. Yeah. What do you think of the new weight classes? Uh. I don't really. I don't really know what they're thinking, honestly. <laughs> like, cause they, so they had the they have proposed weight classes that the scientific committee came up with, right? Yeah. And then that got leaked or whatever, and I'm like, all right, these these look good. These make sense. They made sense. Reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I can I can yeah. see where they're coming yeah. from. Like, I don't know what I don't know really what they're thinking with these. I don't know if it was. So, you know, just take I one mean, example. Heroes thought there was, like, maybe some corruption or, like, the, no. <laughs> the Arab, what? Arab countries. At the IWF? IWF. <laughs> what? What would ever get, give you that? Get anything? out of this room. <laughs> that is not it. <laughs> Shocked. <laughs> so, uh, you know, let me ask you this. Like, women's, right? You go 55, 59 is a jump. That makes, that makes no sense. And then for the Olympics, then they're going from, yeah. There's that again, like you were mentioning before, that, that where the bell cur- curve is at its greatest, there is the most amount of space for the women as well. For the women and the men. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, you go 64 to 76. Yeah. Well, and like, how many people are going to be 45 kilos? You know? Like, and, and then go to from 56 and you drop to 55 rather than going up to like a 60 kilo as your bottom weight in the, in the men's division? I really, I. It's baffling. If I remember correctly, like in the past when they've done some of this restructuring, generally that bottom class gets moved up a little because nutrition trends globally were just getting to be bigger people. Yeah. We went down to 56 was already small. We went down to 55. I really, my thinking was we we're going to cut that off and we we're going to start at 60 for the men, give or take, which I think is a small person. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And instead, yeah, now we have 40. The lightest women's is what? 40, 45. 45 right? Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. yeah. How many how many adult women are under 100 pounds and especially adult women who lift regularly? Right. 48 right. was small. Right. <laughs> yeah. 48 is tiny. And those girls already had a hard, I mean, like, oh, like uh, Alyssa Ritchie, right? She's already a tiny person and she's had, she's had trouble making that. Like, it's yeah. a huge, I mean, from 48 to 45, that three kilos, it's a huge percentage. That's what six, seven, six percent, yeah, over six percent that they decide, yeah, it's going to be the I bottom. That, I think it's crazy. It's right. insane. I mean, hopefully this isn't long lasting. And and previous times that they have made weight category changes, it's like two years later than they make another shift. Well, they <laughs> so they had the first set they had for a long time. Then they changed them in ninety. Right, this is supposed to be it for the three. next the next couple quads, right? Yeah, that was the. They plan. might have. My understanding is that they could change which classes are actually contested in the Olympics, though, right? But the 10 are set? But I think the, the 10 weight classes are set. The contested classes might change. So maybe for 2024, 89 kilos will yeah. be one of them. Okay, yeah. Uh, it's messy. Yeah, yeah it's, yeah, it's disappointing. I it does think does not make a lot of sense. It doesn't make a lot of sense. We were excited about the the changes because, like, you know, I think the old structure was fine, but it could it could have used uh, updating. Adding the ninety kilo for the women, for example, was a great, great step move. in the right yeah. direction. Yeah, great move. And then they get rid of, so they get rid of that and they <laughs> they drop it to eighty seven. So I I don't understand any of the logic anywhere it, it doesn't make any sense we needed a bigger class for larger women 87 even 90 is not that big of a female competitor if she's you know oh, like, five eight or above like yeah. and so none of that makes any sense to me at this point no i, I mean hopefully they'll re- they'll come back and review it before the next quad but 
I think we're stuck with these. Yeah. I mean, we had the last set for 20 years or so. <sighs> I think they shifted them in 96 or 7 in anticipation of adding women to the Olympic Games in 2000. So we're probably stuck for, yeah, another two decades. Just keep complaining. We'll just have to keep... <laughs> I mean, I guess if they keep having drug positives, <laughs> they'll realize we got to reset the records again. again. Yeah. That's maybe our, our best hope. Uh, but I don't, <laughs> I don't that think that. we should be yeah, hoping, really hoping that, for that. Because yeah. last uh, thing... <laughs> yeah, it's... it's disappointed to think you had this great opportunity and it seems to have been squandered in some ways i yeah. agree yeah that's yeah, too bad why yeah. didn't they consult with the two doctors <laughs> should have i mean we had sam coffa and uh what's her name uh, uh more more uh more uh, lawson lawson yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so they didn't listen they did not listen. maybe they listened to they listened else. to us about the 90 kilo class they did, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh but that lasted a year. What? Literally a year. <laughs> Literally one one year. So um I also wish they would have just made the same men's and women's classes like they used to have. I don't know why there's different with the same in what way? What do you mean? Like both be sixty kilos or whatever? Yeah, exactly. Like men's and women's have the same body weight classes, it's just male and female. So men's that's how it used to be it just yeah i guess yeah why not why? i never really thought about that well but... i mean i guess i mean I, you just cut off so you like it, you used to you know the women's super heavyweight used to be 82 5 and above yeah so they they had a couple lighter classes maybe one lighter class one or two i forget and then uh, that that many fewer heavy classes yeah but although but it overlaps in the middle although if you if you take like an average range of body weights for women then average range for men I think if you want to be proportional mm -hmm. with each category, you, you're going to have to have weight classes that are a little different. I, I would again, that's yeah. more from a mathematical. Right. Bigger, yeah, bigger spreads for the men. That would, yeah, that yeah. kind of makes sense too. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, I'm just not happy. <laughs> I don't know. Any, nobody I've talked to has said, oh, the new cool classes are great. <laughs> right? Nobody. I, it's, yeah, like across the board. I mean, I guess the 109s is nice because it's like, all right, finally, you recognize 105 is not actually a big human being anymore. Yeah. And the next yeah. jump well, is the guys are Salimi. Yeah. Like 40 kilo. Like At minimum. 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 One the, top, yeah. the top five were all, what, above one, probably above 135. One, one, yeah. Least, yeah. yeah. I think Salimi was 60. Lasha is like 360, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the other Iranian is he must have been at least 150 or 60 like yeah they're yeah. all there's no you're not 120 in a super and competitive I don't think no, no. a 120 class would, would be perfect yeah perfect. well that leak document was 180 I think right or what excuse me 118 I think yeah and that's uh, fine that would be fine too that'd be great yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so so anything that excites you about weightlifting coming up otherwise? Or questions we should have asked you that we didn't ask? <laughs> yeah. uh, I can't think of anything. Well, okay. Dr. I Westbrook? It. No, I mean, I, I'm just in awe that you've yeah. you've been coaching for six years, right? Is that technically what the, yeah, you're at? Yeah, I think so. You have the experience of a lifetime coach. <laughs> um, I've, had, I've had a lot of like really great opportunities yeah I mean, like like really just i think i've done a, a great job with harrison like mm -hmm. i'm doing my very best to be the best coach i can be but i've also had just a lot of really great experiences like yeah. because because of him just unlocking those doors so i've just been very fortunate but, but one of the things i find about you that's so different to many coaches is some coaches get stuck in one philosophy and they just they don't listen to other people other coaches other ideas and you're open to those for the betterment of yourself and the betterment of your athletes and um yeah, you and you, you, you put the pride you know uh, uh, you know, uh, out the door or whatever you want to say, and um, that that is that is awesome. Yeah, I, I just think you're doing really great work. Cool, thank yeah. you. I appreciate yeah. that. Thanks yeah. a lot. Are there uh, when you started coaching? Were there coaches you had, let's say in gymnastics, that you thought like that's what I want to model off? Like that's that's how I want to be as a coach. Um, well, for my area is, is John Thrush because uh, he's you know he's like in really in my city. Like his gym was. His gym was five miles from me, and I did not know what weightlifting was my entire time, entire life growing up. You know, I, I got exposed to weightlifting through CrossFit in college, and I come back and like I had one of the very best coaches in the whole country. Yeah, like five minutes. Yeah, away. five minutes from my front door. So like I never, I never was coached by Thrush, and he was kind of on his way, you know, 
doing other things by the time that I started, but that was the person who I like really respected a lot and I really wanted to to emulate and be like was mm-hmm. John John Thrush my area. Mm-hmm. And then and then once I made it to the training center and I got to meet all my other idols, you know, meeting Zigmund was, yeah. was huge. I yeah. learned so much from Zigmund and then from that first training camp the like Michael Cohen was there and like mm-hmm. all these all these big names in the sport. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I was like knew that that's what I wanted to be as I wanted to be you know, I want to be one of the best weightlifting coaches in America that's yeah, yeah. really what I aspire to absolutely yeah that's absolutely. so cool we're well, doing a great job I'd say you're up there yeah right. for sure. and you've got you know you got great athletes and uh, I mean you know some of this is obviously Harrison's family but like you just you you worked on and developed a great kid as an athlete like a great yeah. person he's a great yeah. guy great he's, athlete and he's grown into a great man too yeah, yeah. and I think really a lot of that Coaches set the tone for athletes, mm-hmm. and I think you've set a great tone for Harrison. So, yeah. great kid, great lifter. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> All right. yeah. Thank awesome. you. Thank Absolutely. you so much, man. All right. yeah.